Today on Affiliate Marketing Dude, what if everything you were taught about keyword research was wrong? After going through tons of tutorials, trainings, videos, webinars, and countless blog posts about how to get free traffic from Google, that's exactly what I found to be the case. And in today's training, we'll be diving deep into the Uber Suggest keyword tool. If you're ready to stop wasting time on overly competitive and super saturated keywords, stick around and watch this entire video because you're going to learn how to get free traffic from Google, my secret trigger word method for finding untapped keywords in seconds, how I'm consistently able to hack my competitors' keywords for even faster traffic, plus learn my glossary method and highly secret WW method that will have you getting traffic in no time from Google. All right here, right now on Affiliate Marketing Dude. Hey guys, it's Marcus, the Affiliate Marketing Dude here with you today. And in this video, we're gonna show you some niche finding hacks and a simple tutorial on the free keyword tool, Uber Suggest. We're gonna show you some things that you need to stop doing right now if you wanna start getting results with your keyword research. This video is gonna be broken into three parts. Part number one, I'm gonna tell you the truth about keyword research. The fact of the matter is there's a lot of people teaching a lot of things and most of it is absolute garbage that's just gonna show you more competitive niches that you can't even get into. Part number two, I'm gonna go through and show you four killer methods for finding untapped niches literally in seconds. These methods you'll wanna write down, keep them on your desk, and anytime you do keyword research, you wanna make sure that you have this handy so that you can find niches that are untapped that'll get you traffic from Google or the other search engines really fast. And in part number three, we're gonna show you what to do next. As always, I have my notes posted from my videos on downloadmynotes.com, but in this video, we have some special stuff for you. So go over to keywordsniffer.com to get the tools, the links, and everything mentioned in this video. Now, let's dive into part number one, the truth about keyword research. First of all, there's five main tools you're gonna use when it comes to keyword research. Some of these are free, some of them are paid. The first one is the Google AdWords Keyword Tool. Now the Google AdWords Keyword Tool is good, but it's primarily for paid traffic. So it's gonna be very difficult to find some SEO keywords and different keywords you could use for free traffic using that tool. Tool number two is SEMrush. This is a detailed keyword tool that you can use. It's about, I think, $79 a month or something like that, but it provides really good results. Another one, my personal favorite, is the Ahrefs keyword tool that provides lots of detailed results on any keyword and competition analysis, which is really important. Now, this one's a little bit more expensive. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the free Uber Suggest keyword tool. Now, what you're gonna notice is when you go to the Uber Suggest tool, you're gonna have a spot here that says, put your keyword in. You're gonna have some links down the side. You're gonna have the keywords. You're gonna have the volume. This is how many times they're searched each month. The average estimated cost per click if you're doing paid search. The difficulty on paid and the difficulty on SEO or organic. Now, what we're gonna be looking for is words that are very, very low competition on the SEO side. Now, we could see if I type the word mortgage in here, which many people would do if they're doing a mortgage website, you could see that it's very, very competitive. So what I wanna show you is some ways around this to find non-competitive niches. First off, we could go through and we can type in a different word with our words. So you could do like mortgage, ideas or something like that if anyone types that in right you're going to get some results for mortgage ideas or mortgage quotes or mortgage loans or whatever it is you could see this word doesn't get that much traffic now one thing you can do is you can use what i call a keyword jogger which we'll talk about a little bit later as well where we go through and we put a keyword that goes alongside our niche so our niche is mortgage we would go through and put something like qualifications and this is gonna give us some less competitive keywords. And when you look at these keywords, they're actually more targeted, so it's gonna be easier to convert them. So right off the bat, you could see we have a lot of different keywords around this mortgage qualification idea that are low competition and actually get searches. So these are the ones that you wanna focus on, and it's very important that you do this because most people are just gonna come here and they're gonna type something in like weight loss, and they're gonna find out 
using the word weight loss, again, is very, very competitive. So it's going to be very difficult. If you have a new site, you want these to be like below 10 if possible. So we could use a keyword jog or something like weight loss PDF for people looking for weight loss PDF books or something like that. Again, if you want a list of the keyword joggers and the tools used in this video, check out keywordsniffer.com. And right here we could see Look at the competition drop drastically. Now, when we do this, we want to understand how keyword research works. We want to understand how people search the web and what the intent is behind a certain keyword because intent is everything. A guy taping in weight loss has a different intent than someone looking for a weight loss PDF or a weight loss chart. The guy looking for the chart obviously is farther along in his research on how to lose weight. So it's very important that we look at this. Now, let's go ahead and dive into part number two. Again, in part number one, don't do the generic keyword research. Go through and use a keyword jogger or use one of these four methods that I'm going to show you here in part two. So let's dive into these four methods. They're very basic, very simple. And using these, I can guarantee you're going to be able to find no competition and low competition keywords in any niche, no matter how competitive it might seem. The first of our methods is known as my secret trigger word method. I have a list of over 300 different trigger words you could use over at keywordsniffer.com. Now, these keywords have nothing to do with any market. So if you just want to make money online and you're looking for ways to get traffic, this is perfect for you. Now, you can also pair these with your niche or other keywords that you're using, but these are best used as ways to find out what people are searching for. Remember, as a search marketer, my job is only to find out what people are searching for. I really don't care about anything else. I just want to know what they're searching for, what has low competition, put my stuff in front of them, and drive them to things that make me money. It's very simple. Now, the way that I do this isn't by diving into a market like this guy. It's by using a trigger word. Trigger words are like this list here. Now, this is a smaller list. You could get the bigger list at my website. And we could go through and use these in a really easy way. So instead of going to the Uber Suggest keyword tool and typing something in like mortgage or weight loss or whatever it is, I could go through and I could type one of these trigger words in. Let's say we want to use the word chart. What kind of charts are people looking for? Now, when we use the word chart, you're going to see a lot of low competition keywords that you can use. And again, think about the intent. So a guy looking up a chart for BMI, okay, this could lead us to a really, really good niche. Now I could just take this keyword and say, okay, well, chart for BMI, this is pretty much the weight loss market. They're looking for body mass index. A little research will show you that. And now when we type in chart for BMI, we can go through and we can get all these people. Look at this low competition traffic here. And now it's very easy to make content because it's like, hey, all I got to do is make a chart, a little description of the chart, a little guide or something like that. And boom, I can now get this traffic from people who are looking for ways to lose weight. They're just not looking it up directly, so other marketers haven't found it. You could see using this trigger word method, if we take the next one, maybe we do instructions or decrease. And again, lots of low competition words like decrease libido, how to decrease blood pressure, decrease cardiac stuff, decrease in appetite, all kinds of different things like this. And again, very low competition. Some of these will lead to different supplements you can offer, some will lead to uh, weight loss stuff. Some of them will lead to something else. And again, we got to look at the intent because obviously someone looking up decrease in appetite has a different intent than someone looking up decreased libido or something like that. Okay. Very, very simple. We could keep going with these words. Again, you can use the entire list. Uh, we could use something like remove. What do people want to remove? And this is going to show us again, lots of no competition stuff or low competition stuff that we can use to get traffic to our website in a very, very easy way. We got removing acne. There's great products on acne. You got remove skin tags, great products on that. Remove wallpaper, remove, uh, all kinds of different things like this. Remove image background. Um, remove scratches from car. Popcorn ceiling. This leads to people that pay a lot of money. We just paid to have our popcorn ceiling removed a few years ago. Remove password from a PDF. That would go great with like a PDF offer. And on and on we go. So now you could see you're starting to change the way you think about keyword research. And when you use these trigger words, you will always, without fail, find good keywords that you could use for anything. And again, think about how the person searches. If they're looking to uninstall, maybe you could do a site about how to do uninstall computer software, how to uninstall 
certain different things. And, and we go through and we can see, again, very low competition, lots of traffic, lots of people looking for ways to uninstall stuff. And I'll tell you right now, there are people in this market making more money than you would ever think possible with these simple keywords in a very easy way. And the key is looking for the low competition using these words. Again, if we say uninstall, it's basically leading to like spyware software where it's like, hey, how do you remove spyware or whatever? Or how do you remove things from your PC? It basically goes into spyware software and you're going to see if you do spyware software, this is super competitive. People are paying a lot of money. There's a lot of competition. It's very difficult to get into a market like this and there's not even that much traffic. So we could go through and say, hey, look, I just found a back door into this market. Now, that's what the trigger words are all about is a back door to a market. You're going through looking for a back door to the market for spyware and finding non-competitive or low competitive keywords. So the trigger word method is a very good method to use. Again, get that trigger word list and use it and you will find keywords in seconds. And now for secret method number two. Secret method number two is all about how to ethically hack your competition. So what you want to do is you want to find keywords that have to do with your market that are a little less competitive and then find sites that are ranking for those words. For example, let's say I'm going for a word for my stuff. Maybe it is something like remove a vast. Maybe they want to remove a vast program, which is like some kind of spyware program software thing, right? So we got like remove a vast, a vast remove tool, different things like this, okay? Now, what I wanna do is I wanna take this keyword, if I can highlight it here, right? I wanna take this keyword, we'll do re go to Google, and we'll do remove a vast tool, and we'll see who comes up. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna find sites that are smaller. So obviously we don't wanna use like a vast, Bleeping Computer's a pretty big site. We wanna find smaller sites, like maybe Major Geeks or Appalls or something like that. And we wanna find a site that's dedicated to this one niche. A niche about removing something, a niche about whatever. Like this guy here, avastremovaltool.com. This is pretty good, right? So this is a site that ranks for these keywords. We can take his site, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our Uber Suggest keyword tool. We're gonna click this little arrow here, and we're gonna go ahead and click on keywords. What we're gonna do is we're gonna type in his domain name and other domain names that show up for the keywords that we want. And you can see when we pull this up here, we have lots of different results for his site, what he's ranking for, and we can kind of pull out the best keywords that have low competition. Now, you're gonna wanna do this for like five to 10 different sites in your niche at the get-go so you can see what's going on. And then you're also going to want to do this for every new keyword that you find. For example, if I was going for something like gardening reviews, I would probably take these guys like Dave's Garden and Gardening Products Reviews, and I would put these in into my keyword tool like this and see what they rank for. Now, this is gonna give you a lot of keywords that these people rank for, and you can go through and pick out the ones that are low competition or no competition, and you can pick out the ones you want, like AM Leonard, we don't know what that is. That might not be a keyword you want, or gardening weasel, that might not be something you want. So you could go through and find the ones that really, really stand out, because if you spend more time on the stuff that is less competitive, but links to something that you can sell or offer, that's gonna get you a much better result than just trying to go for all the competitive keywords. So we could go through and we can find the different products he reviews and different things like that, like Thermacell or Fiskars Pruners or uh, Hydroshock or whatever, and we can find these keywords and go for the different stuff. Now, again, every time you do this, you wanna kind of go through and look at this keyword at a glance. So if we do like uh, Hydroshot Works Review, right? We could type that in here and see what comes up because chances are there's gonna be some subcategory keywords that are pertaining to this word. So it's not just that you're gonna get maybe 2,400 searches, you're also gonna go for all this other stuff. And now if I take this a step further and I do a search on Google, let's go over to Google here, and I do a search on Google for Hydroshot Works Reviews, I can go through and I can find the different sites that are going like Pro Tools, uh, don't Waste Your Money, Gardening Review, Top 10 Reviews, and I can find all the people that are ranking for this, and I could do the same process by putting their site in here, finding out what keywords they have, and my goal is to use this and, and use this method to where we go through, and I'm going to get 
five to 10 different sites and I'm going to find out what the best cream of the crop keywords that I want to go after are that have low competition. I'm slowly going to build my site up and I'm going to do this over and over again, finding different sites that rank for different keywords. And I'm going to find all the sleeper keywords, which are keywords that other people aren't going for that are non-competitive. And I'm going to strip these out and make a master keyword list that I'm going to go for. I do this all the time on my websites and it works really well. And I can get traffic extremely fast using this method by letting the other people do the work for me because this guy went out there and he found all the products to review I can use that the other sites have found all the keywords that you can use and you can go in and direct target and the cool thing about this is oftentimes like nine out of ten times you're gonna find out that people get unintentional keywords so they might rank for a word that they didn't intentionally go for for example on my website I made a site or I made a post about um, how to copy and paste ads and make money. I listed a bunch of different places where you can get ads, and I found out that one of those words unintentionally was ranking and getting me traffic. So I revamped that blog post around that keyword, and now I'm getting traffic every single day from that one little post that I didn't even intend to get. So it works extremely well, and you can ethically hack what your competition's doing by finding out, using the Uber Suggest keyword tool, what they're ranking for, what has competition, what has traffic, and what you can get in on very fast. Now let's dive into method number three. Now, method number three is very simple, but it's extremely effective, so don't overlook it or overthink it. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our search engine, and we're going to type something in related to our niche. So if your niche was refinance, we would type in refinance glossary. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull up sites that have glossaries of certain refinance terms, because in any niche... They have their own language. They have their own lingo. Here on Affiliate Marketing Dude, we talk about landing pages, squeeze pages, keyword tools, keyword difficulty, all these terms that people use for this niche that relate to this niche. So if they're searching for any of that stuff, chances are they're interested in SEO or affiliate marketing or something like that. Same thing with refinance. People typing in cost to close or LTV or um, you know credit score for refinance or something like that. These are all based on refinance. And what we can do is we can look it up. So for example, if we have a blog post like this that actually has a list, this is on my blog, that has a list of a bunch of words that are used as a glossary for affiliate marketing. So we could say, well, you know, maybe uh, people are looking up affiliate link right? And you might think, well, you know, affiliate marketing, we got to go for the keyword affiliate marketing. But the cool thing is, is you're going to find out that people actually do type in things related to affiliate link. Very, very simple. There's actually quite a few people looking for stuff related to affiliate link and check it out. Super low competition. We can do this with literally everything. We can type in advertorial, Right? Are people looking up stuff related to advertorials? If they are, they're probably interested in making an advertorial type website. And we can see here, once this decides to load, it's being very slow. Right, We can see here, there's 3,600 people looking all this stuff up. Advertorial definition, very low competition. Or perhaps call to action, people looking up what a call to action is. And this is going to be on everything. If they're looking for stuff related to gardening, you know, they might type in like harvesting or seed planting times or something like that. And if you have this glossary and you do the keyword research with your glossary, you will always, without fail, find keywords that like this one, have low competition and are very highly tied in to what you're doing. Like this guy's looking for call to action examples. He wants to learn how to sell stuff on his website. Very, very simple. And we could just go down this list and we can find all kinds of different things like social proof or limited time offer or info marketing. And you're going to find keywords all the time. Very, very easy. Now, if we did this with refinance, we could go through and say, okay, well, what kind of words are people looking up for refinance? Right. And we could say, uh, maybe there's people looking for adjustable rate mortgage or adjustment period or amortization or a balloon loan or a, or a bridge loan, broker fees, buy down, all kinds of different things. Like people in here, we were seeing social proofs pretty good. People in here looking for like buy down rate. They're looking to buy down their mortgage rate, right? Very simple, very easy. And this is something off the beaten path, but it's getting a visitor that's more into the buying process than something else. So if we do like buy down, 
um, we can see all the people that are looking up buy down, all the people that are looking up uh, how to buy down your rate or loan to value or whatever it is. And you can find all kinds of different stuff like cash out refinance, cash to close, um, all kinds of stuff. And again, people are searching this like buy down interest rate. Look at the competition on that. You compare that with like mortgage or refinance, right? It's not even a comparison. And these people are further along in the research process and they're looking to buy stuff. You can even do like closing cost or something like that. And you're going to find lots of keywords for that as well. So using the glossary method is without fail, one of the best methods I use. And it works like a charm. Again, low competition. We're getting the green light on all of these. And there's a lot of traffic here. So you just want to go through, go to Google, find a couple of good glossaries, start putting those into your keyword tool to find out what people are searching for. Look at their intent, right? What would the intent be? They're either looking to buy or sell and they want to know the closing cost. Very simple. So we go through, we get the words, we build them into a big list, and we start to pluck away and build content based on the keywords we know we can get. So like closing cost, who pays? That's pretty low competition, and that's a really, really good one because it's probably a seller or a buyer of a house. Very simple. Um, do this with your market. You will always find keywords. Now let's dive in to number four. Method number four is the WW or Wonder Wheel method. Years ago, there was a thing on Google called the Wonder Wheel where you could type in a keyword and find all kinds of keyword branches, so to speak, that were based on that keyword. Now, that tool is no longer there, but there are other tools you can use. You can go through and you want to ask the question, who else wants what I have to offer? Who else would be interested in this stuff I have? So what we're going to do is we're going to make a map. We're going to start with our main keyword. So let's say our main keyword, we want people looking for refinance, right? We go through and we're like, who else would want a refinance? We're going to use our glossary method. We're going to use our competitor keywords. We're going to use our brain and we're going to start to think about what these people would want. So we could say loan to value. We could say uh, minimum credit score for FHA. We could say how to cash out. What's a ca cash out refinance calculator? We could do stuff like current rates. And we're going to make a wheel of all the things people are looking at related to this topic. Now, another little tip you can use is you could actually go to Google and you could search for your keyword. So if we go into Google and we type in right like this and we type in refinance, what Google's going to do is they're going to give you some related searches at the bottom here. And they're going to say, here's some searches that are related. Refinance calculator, car rates, should I refinance? These are ones that we want to type into our keyword tool. Another thing you can do is you can type in your main keyword like this and look at the drop-down suggestions. Should I refinance, chase refinance, refinance mortgage calculator, and on and on we go. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you lots and lots of different keywords. What you want to do is you want to get your brain thinking like your visitor. What would they type in? How would they know to find you if they didn't know exactly what you offer? What can you do to get them in there? And it's very important to do this where you start with your main keyword and then you're going to branch out based on what they want. Look at suggestions. You can also go to Google and type in your keyword plus A, keyword plus B, C, D, and it's going to give you all kinds of suggestions about that keyword or topic. There's also lots of tools that we'll include over on keywordsniffer.com that you can use to find and other different things as well. One of the tools that we use is the power search tool that you can use on Affiliate Marketing Dude or on Keyword Sniffer. This will go through and you can type in your keyword, refinance, and you can find all kinds of stuff related and you can find all kinds of stuff related to refinance. It's going to do the research for you. So very simple. You want to go through. You want to use these four methods to find keywords. It's not that hard to do. You just want to keep your options open, keep your ideas going, and start to make a list of what really works. Now, if you want to learn more about this, you can go to keywordsniffer.com and also check the videos in the description and the video that's going to pop up around here that has a detailed review of how to do this.